I did this first test because originally the squad was going to be shown leaving the helicopter by ladder. For these tests, I built each frame of the explosion, animated the sequence, and looked through the video to see which frames need to be removed and what need to be added to get a realistic explosion effect. This is an early muzzle flare test. The first bullet hole effect I tested worked well enough that it ended up being the one used in the film. For the rain scene, I didn't want to use any visual effects because A, I'm not very experienced with visual effects, and B, I wanted to try animating rain completely in shot. These tests let me try out different techniques until I found one that would work for the scene. The reason these grenade effects look worse than the ones in the movie is because in the movie there are rocks covering up the base of the explosions. A version of the second shot where the scene gradually becomes clear instead of gradually becoming blurry. These two shots would have been the only ones in the Taste of Victory that were filmed by me. I thought that for the beginning of the ambush scene, it would work better if the camera was still, as opposed to the moving shots Gary filmed. However, in the end, we decided to use the moving shots instead. This shot was going to be a deserted town introductory shot. It doesn't really work well with the shots that would have gone before and after it, and isn't really necessary, therefore it was cut from the movie. I'm not really sure why I reanimated this. The angle of this shot prevented the viewer from seeing the entire explosion, and the animation is somewhat jerky. Because this shot has a lot of things moving around, and because of poor planning, I had to animate it five times before getting it right. The next three shots are all different angles showing the same action, but I had trouble finding the right shot for this particular part. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted this scene to transition from fighting to quiet. These shots were filmed without much planning as I tried to figure out how. This shows how the transition could have been a lot slower than it is in the film. I filmed this same shot a lot of times also, but I'm not exactly sure why. Sometimes I realize what I'm animating looks bad and decide to have some fun with it. This is a much more close-up version of the shot we did use. Miller climbs into the truck too fast in this part. This was the very first shot I filmed for the Taste of Victory. It was very early in production, and it's notable that Evans doesn't have a rocket launcher. Also, it may be impossible to see, but not all the squad's faces are the same. Powell looked like he was moving around too much in this one. The forest scene, and the whole movie for that matter, has lots of unused footage. Some of it looks pretty good, and some of it looks bad. Some shots were cut because I changed my mind about where somebody needed to be in the next shot, some because of small mistakes, many weren't framed well or shot from bad angles, and others I think could have actually worked in the film. It is important to note that this was filmed back in 2010, and if I didn't like it then, I separated it from the footage I did like. Had I looked through this footage again while I was editing, I may have decided to use some of it. Parts of these two shots are in the movie, but not all of them because they were intercut with another shot. Using both of them, though, caused a continuity error. In one shot, the briefcase is open, and in the next it is closed. In the shot after that, the briefcase is open again. These are a few alternate versions of the shot of Brown's reaction, with dolly zooms, also known as vertigo effects, and one with no zoom at all. This section shows shots before and after they are masked. If you don't know what masking is, it's a technique where two pictures are taken, one with an object and a support holding it in place, the other without the object or the support. In an image editing program, the support from the first picture is replaced by the background for the second picture, so that the object looks as if it is suspended in midair. Whenever something needs to look like it is floating, flying, falling, etc., masking is a useful technique. We hope you enjoyed seeing everything we didn't end up using in the Taste of Victory, and thanks for watching.